Who's the greatest basketball player of all time? If you said MJ or Michael Jordan, you'd be correct. Now, did you know that Michael Jordan was selected by the Bulls as the third overall draft pick in the NBA draft, that at that time their record was a lousy 27 and 55? Something that you probably didn't know was from the time that he joined the Bulls onwards, they made the playoffs every season he was with them despite having a losing record the, the very first three years he was with them. Impressive, right? Now, I don't know about you, but growing up, I knew that he was a great player. You know, he was, he was my basketball hero. But it wasn't until, I believe, last year that I watched the documentary, The Last Dance, that I really fully grasped and appreciated his entire story. Now, when he joined the Bulls, their solution to consecutive losing seasons ended up not being a how, but instead a who. Let me explain. So the Bulls knew that Jordan couldn't do it all by himself, which caused them to add a couple more who's, and those who's were Scottie Pippen and Coach Phil Jackson. And once they did that, then they were able to begin their domination. Now, stories like these, which really show how teaming up with the right people in your personal life will help catapult you to success. And let me grab this book over here. And this is, this is why I really enjoyed reading recently this book, actually this summer, Who Not How by Dan Sullivan and Dr. Ben Hardy. So in today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you the four main lessons that I learned from the book and how you too can use these quickly to accomplish the goals that you thought otherwise would be way too time consuming. And also you'll be able to use these four steps to help you with whatever you're trying to accomplish in either your business or your personal life. Speaking of accomplishments, if you haven't already downloaded the free passive income guide that I've created especially for you, then you could do so just by simply clicking the link that's listed below this video. All right, let's get into it. So if you're like most people, the first thing you do, myself included, when, when you try to accomplish something is you ask yourself, hey, how do I achieve this goal? Again, I, I used to do this and I occasionally catch myself doing this as well. Perfect example is when I wanted to start this YouTube channel. One of the first questions that popped into my mind was, how do I start a YouTube channel? Now, the book notes that this is the wrong question to ask. Unfortunately, this how question is, think about it, it's what we've been taught our entire lives. So we're taught in school from an early age that we need to do everything ourselves, okay? It's sad, but it really in some instances, we're taught that if we get help from others, it's sometimes termed it's cheating and it's something that we should stay away from. But what if you ask a different question? All right, let me, here, here's something that happened to me recently that'll help put this, this whole idea in, a little bit in perspective for you. So I was recently asked to join our local fellowship of Christian athletes born board here in my hometown. And a good friend of mine, who was a former high school football coach, he recently left his position as he felt led to go a different direction in his life, which involves bringing Christ to local high school athletes. Now, shortly after his decision, he called me. He, you know, he wanted to go to lunch with me. And as you can imagine, he's very uncomfortable being in this new position because all he knew was how to just coach football. And I went on to explain to him, and, and literally it was right after I, you know, read this book. So all this, you know, was fresh in my mind. The, the different questions he was asking me and asking what to do and, and all of those types of things to, to raise money and this and that, he was asking the wrong questions. So instead of asking, how can I reach more athletes or how can I do this or how can I do that? Or how can I find more donors? He should instead, what? He should instead find more who's. Now, I told him that if he, if he wanted to 
quickly accomplish these goals that he's got to stop asking uh, the question like, how can I accomplish? How can I accomplish this? A much a much better question that he could ask is, who can help me achieve this? And you know what I said? Hey, coach, stick to what you know doing best, coaching. Now, by that I meant what he should think about doing is put together a coaching staff of volunteers that help that could help support him to achieve his goals. So by him finding his who's, he can then sit back and let them create the results best for his organization. So if you find yourself in the same situation, trying to accomplish something very challenging or difficult than you've ever done before, then the best thing to do, again, is to, to find a who. Now, if you're, gonna, if you're going to apply a higher level of teamwork to any aspects of your life, you're really going to need to relinquish control over, over really how things get done. And again, this, is, this has been and this continues to be very difficult for me. And what's really cool about this book is it's broken up into to four parts, four sections that really go over the freedom of time, the freedom of money, the freedom of relationship, and the freedom of purpose. So what I like to do is, is to take each four of these and break them down, and then that will explain how you can use these into your life to, to make it much more, um, to accomplish much more than you really thought that you could if you did something on your own. So the first, the first part that was discussed was the freedom of time. And it was a really cool story, which I, I, I relayed to my two teenage boys because it was about uh, a teenager. The, the kid's name was Richie, and he was, I believe, 16 years old. And he wanted to get a job over the summer, but his dad didn't want him to because he realized that what Richie really wanted was money and thought, you know what, this whole idea is of me wanting money or my son wanting money over the summer, it'd be a good teaching moment. So instead, his dad instructed him and his brother to go to the local watermelon farm and buy up all the, the irregular shaped watermelons, the farmers, they couldn't sell. And then what he would do is he would take that, um, he, he gave them some seed money to go down to the, to the, the farmer's market to do this. So the, they went, they went, they did it. When they got home, they had a, you know, a band full of irregular shaped watermelons and they started going through and going through the phone book and then calling all the people that they knew, offering them these irregular shaped watermelons much, much cheaper than if they went to a grocery store to buy them. Now, the cool thing about this was they couldn't have picked a better time to do it because it was just before the 4th of July holiday. Now, within just a few short hours, they had actually sold out of all the watermelons. And what was really impressive was that they made more money than, than they would have made the entire summer if they worked a full-time job. And when Richie first decided that he wanted to have more money, he asked, he asked his dad, how, there's that how again, how can I make enough money, dad, to last me all summer? But again, by asking how he was going to do this, then, then he was going to have to give away all of his summer because how cost you time. Think about that. Whatever you're trying to accomplish something, how, you know, how can I do this? How can I accomplish this? Well, you've got to take a, a step back. You know, how am I going to start this YouTube channel? If, if I wouldn't have hired people to help me or that continue to help me, think about all the time that would have cost me. Okay. And especially with, with editing these videos, it's, it's so it's hours and hours that it would have, that it would cost, that it would have cost me in time. Again, freedom of time. So instead, I found a who. So Richie's dad was an entrepreneur, as if you couldn't tell. And he thought differently about time and he thought differently about money. So when Richie initially spoke with his dad, his dad actually became Richie's who in showing him a much more effective way to make money with the least amount of effort. He now didn't have to give away months of his time and freedom. 
So what, so the, the two things that you need to remember is how is going to be linear and very slow. But on the other hand, when we ask about who, who is nonlinear and it's instantaneous. Now, remember the freedom of time, it's not fixed. Okay. Freedom of time is not fixed, but it's flexible. It's not finite. It's infinite. And you never reach a place where you can't improve your freedom of time because it isn't solely about having all the time to do what you want. It also involves using your time on increasing quality activities. So the bottom line is how, how is going to decrease your time. So just remember that. Anything that you want to do new, anything you're trying to accomplish, if you're automatically start asking yourself, how do I do this or how do I do that? Just remember, if you go down that route, how is going to be a time suck for you. All right, moving right along to number two. From the freedom of time, now we're going to the freedom of money. Now, when you begin taking your own time more seriously, which I hope you do after this video, then this freedom of money actually starts to take care of itself. Whether you realize it or not, money, money avoids the person. Okay. Money avoids the person who does not value their time. I'm going to say that again. Money avoids the person that does not value their time. Only those that make it a point to improve their time are the ones that truly value it. Those are the ones that actually get to start to experience freedom. Now, once you start adding these different who's to your life to handle the how's, then your time will be best spent on those things that make the biggest impact. You also have to make investments. All right. You have to make investments to increase your freedom, your freedom as well. You've got to commit to doing things better and you've got to commit to doing things smarter, not only working harder, which is what we've always been taught to do, right? So remember, you can't have money freedom until you achieve time freedom, okay? Now, something else that you should start to focus on as well is learning about the opportunity cost of how the opportunity cost of how by doing everything yourself, you miss out on growth that comes by investing in who's and utilizing time and efforts on higher impact act activities. Too many, too many people are trained to think in terms of cost, right? Too many people are trained to think in terms of cost, rather than investments. I know I was. And every time you invest in a who, such as maybe paying somebody a couple thousand bucks to do a website, you save dozens or hundreds of hours that could be spent on doing something much more invaluable with your time and profitable. Once you get into the habit of doing this, it becomes a complete game changer in your life. And if you're like me and, you, and you, you're grown up like this and you're very cost minded, then by nature, you could get to the point where you're very transactional and just focused on the short term. And what this is going to cause you to do, it's going to cause you to see a who as a cost, which means that you'll never be able to, to create what you're really capable of doing. So who's when selected properly to fit within your vision, who's are never a cost. That was, and it took me a while regarding this channel. You know, I, I wanted to try to do everything myself. I started looking for who's well, again, with, with the way, you know, the way that I'm wired, the way that God wired me, I'm, uh, you know, a lot of times short-term thinking and 
okay, well, I got to find somebody. I've got to find a who, but it's all going to be based on cost instead of looking at somebody that can provide me the best value. Remember, who's are never a cost. Who's are always an investment. Which leads us to part three, and that is the freedom of relationship. Freedom of a relationship means that you not only have access to whatever who's you need to achieve your goals, but you also have deeper and higher quality relationships overall. Your ability to succeed is based on the quality of the people that you surround yourself with. Now, as you increase your time and your money freedoms, you're going to have much more greater access, access to who's that not only can it, uh, help you achieve these bigger goals, but also they'll give you a deeper sense of meaning and purpose in your life. All right, so think about this. Whenever you meet new people, it's only natural to think a lot of times, what's in it for me? Right? What's in it for me? But instead, when we meet people, we should, we should ask ourselves or be thinking, what's in it for them? Asking what's in it for me, it's, it's not a good, it's actually a terrible way to, to get access to people as it's literally impossible to create good lasting relationships with this, you know, this selfish type mindset. But on the flip side, if you find yourself attracting these types of people, then get away from them, avoid them like the plague, because these types of people, all they are, are takers. They're going to suck the life out of you. They're not givers or takers. And the book's authors, they actually recommended that you don't reach out to somebody unless you have something meaningful to offer them. And I've learned this a lot with my blog and YouTube channel, and I've seen it from people as well. You know, so for instance, I'll have probably three or four times a week, I'll have somebody reach out to me. Hey, um, I read an article that you did, or I just reached your, you know, I just came across your blog for the first time. Uh, do you mind putting this guide or this ebook or, or this article or whatever on your blog? I mean, it was, it's, it's all about taking instead of the approach should be, Hey, you know, maybe I came across your blog or I came across an article. Uh, how about, would you like me to take it and send it out to my list of people or, or send it out to people, whatever. So giving first. So then if they did that, I would be much more apt to respond when they come back later and ask me for a favor instead of just taking, taking, taking. Does that make sense? So make sure that when you're, when you're doing these relationships, you want to focus on providing value first. If you're useful and you're generous, the world will be the same for you. It's going to be good for you too. You'll have all the opportunity in the entire world that you'll need because you have this freedom of relationship. Remember, never stop providing value Never stop providing this value to your who, to your who's, okay? Because remember, they're not a cost. All right, so this leads us to the, the last part, part four, which is the freedom of purpose. So the freedom of purpose is the sense of vision and purpose you have for your life. So your sense of purpose expands as you see meaning and value in what you're doing. So typically, the bigger the purpose, or the bigger your sense of purpose, the more meaningful your life will be. Again, with when I first started my blog and the video, the when I initially started, I was just going through the motions. But then after I started doing it more and more, people started commenting. Uh, they started reaching out to me, actually telling me it was helping, which which helped to reinforce the cycle that, hey, I'm starting to provide value for people. So it expanded my vision of purpose. Another example of this, of using this freedom of purpose is whenever you start to involve who's, whatever, with that, whatever project or whatever you're trying to do. And by adding who's, you know, the, the right person to what you're doing, typically these people are going to have greater capabilities and perspectives, whichever areas of your life that you're weak in. 
And when you do this, the initial vision you had is automatically going to expand. So you're actually at this point, your goal becomes far better than anything that you could that you could create on your own, which again is going to lead to better results. Now, when you focus on how you quickly become isolated in your goals, because focusing on how comes from the faulty reasoning that you're a hundred percent responsible for getting the job done. Remember how we were raised, we're raised to do everything ourselves. So when we focus on this, then you're, you're the man, you're the one that's responsible for everything. Now this may lead over time to a good work, work ethic, but ultimately it's not the best way to operate because we want to make sure that we focus on results because it's in at the end of the day, results are what counts. So focusing on how, whenever you, again, whenever you focus on how to do something or, or how to accomplish something, it makes you rigid and non-collaborative in your thinking. Whenever you focus on how it stresses you out more, and it actually stunts your personal growth. And the last thing this does, focusing on how it actually leads to isolation in your goals, which ultimately slows down your progress. And the, the book ended with a really cool story. It was actually a really good story rega regarding, um, and you probably, you may have heard this before, when uh, then President JFK visited NASA headquarters in 61. And when he was touring the facility, he, he went up and, you know, he saw a, a guy mopping the floor or whatever, a janitor, and he, inter he introduced himself to the janitor and he asked him, he said, you know, what do you do around here at NASA? And the janitor's reply was not only surprising, but it was very inspiring, but because he told the president, he said, I'm helping put a man, I'm helping to put a man on the moon. So that janitor wasn't just mopping the floor or wasn't just cleaning toilets. He knew that he was part of something much bigger and much more important than himself. Because you see, he had a purpose for the work he was doing. And with purpose, you can do your best work no matter what work that is. Now, I've made it a point to do something after I, I read this book and, and another book. I, I made it a point to do something every 90 days two things. Number one, I've made it a point to make a list of all the things I either don't like doing, don't enjoy doing, or I'm not good at. And that's a pretty big list. Every 90 days, I'm doing that. And then number two, I've made it a point to find a particular who to take these things over that I either don't like doing or I'm not good at doing. So speaking of making a point to do something new, question, have you made it a point to start building your wealth yet after watching some of these videos? If so, what I'd like for you to do is check out the next video, which you can get right here, where I'm going to walk you through the top three wealth building lessons that I think everybody should know. Take care.